Jesus is still a Jew. What is Christianity? Simply put, it's the practice of following and obeying Jesus, starting with his first command, to repent and believe in the coming kingdom of God. In Western culture, we've become so accustomed to seeing Jesus deified in classical artwork, evangelical proclamations, and church dogma that we forget he was really a human being. Jesus was a man who fully expressed the character of his father. He was a man raised in the faith and tradition of Israel, a faith which most Christians today overlook when forming their theological positions. Imagine that! Today, Christians all over the world ignore the faith and core teachings of the very Messiah they claim to be following. So, in the next few minutes, we want to explore what Jesus actually taught and believed, and the importance of understanding Christianity in its proper first-century Jewish context. Reminder number one that Jesus is still a Jew. Jesus professed belief in the one God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob not the triune God of Christianity's post-biblical church councils. Now here's a suggestion. If we were all able to agree that Jesus was a Jew, he was a Jew, Mary was a Jew, Joseph was a Jew, therefore his preaching has a Jewish background. Jesus believed that the true God of the world is a single person with a capital P, not a triune essence. The world is currently divided into huge blocks of competing world religions. You have a billion Christians in, in fragmented incidentally into thousands of denominations unable to agree. Then you have the Muslims passionate about Islam and you have the Jewish people struggling for their land in the Middle East of course and believing, some of them at least, that the Messiah has yet to come. What distinguishes Christianity, Biblical Christianity, New Testament Christianity, from both of those systems is the belief that Messiah has come and has died. You remember that Islam actually does believe that Jesus of Nazareth was a Messiah. It believes even that he was virginally begotten by miracle in Mary. But it doesn't say that he's the Son of God. They're nervous about saying they, that, that God could have a son because they're so afraid of the Trinity. They don't need to be afraid of the Trinity. That's not in the Bible. God is still one. So it's impossible until we get some point of commonality here for these differing world religions to come together in sensible dialogue. The art of getting unity would be simplicity. God is one single person. That's an easy idea. Jesus, if you read him in Mark chapter 12, verses 29, when asked about the greatest commandment, notice the greatest commandment of all, he simply gives the right Jewish and therefore in his case, Christian answer, he being Christ, the teacher of Christianity, the answer is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one single Lord. That is so simple and so easy. So, this idea that God is one, as Jesus clearly said, would bring the Jew and the Islamic people and Christians who love the Bible into some sort of free dialogue. This would be a beginning of trying then to remedy the present chaos and the friction and the agony that now separates us all into different camps. So what would be the simple form of the faith? Belief in God as one single person. Echad in Hebrew. One single Lord. Not three or two. Reminder number two that Jesus is still a Jew. The Gospel, which was the purpose for which Jesus was commissioned, is not only about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as modern Christians propose, it's firstly about the Kingdom of God as the fulfillment of God's covenant with Abraham. Look at Luke 4.43, Jesus was asked, what do you do for a job, you know, what is your motivation? And the answer is clearly, God sent me to announce the gospel about the kingdom of God, that's my commission. Mm -hmm. Or Mark chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, where Jesus' first command is, you're to repent, that's to change your mind, get your life onto a new track, reorientate yourself in a new, new direction, and you are to believe, that's a command, the gospel about the kingdom of God, which is 
according to Jesus, God's own gospel comes from heaven. And don't forget that the gospel is Christianity. This is the faith. Mm -hmm. If you don't define the gospel right, you're not defining Christianity clearly. So here's the point that we're raising. Jesus, when he preached the gospel, did not speak about his death and resurrection. He did not. He didn't come into Galilee saying, I'm the son of God, I'm going to die for your sins and be raised. He didn't say it. In fact, only in the very last section of his ministry, let's say in the last half year of his possible three and a half year ministry, did he even raise the issue of death. And when he told the apostles, they didn't believe it. Indeed, they didn't believe in his death and resurrection, even when he was resurrected. Right. The logical point here, which is so important, is that Jesus cannot have been preaching the gospel about the death, burial and resurrection of himself. He didn't. And yet the Bible says, on page after page, that he was preaching the gospel. Was Jesus a miserable failure? Did he fail to preach the gospel? Obviously not. He is the preacher of the gospel, and it's about the kingdom. So then the question is, what's the kingdom? The Hebrew Bible, that 75% of your Bible that Jesus took into the synagogue, is a, an important foundation in terms of Abraham. Paul calls this Christian faith that I'm trying to describe here the faith of Abraham. Abraham is said to be the father of the faithful. Indeed, the gospel, Galatians 3.8, was preached ahead of time to Abraham. That's a brilliant insight. Simply put, Abraham was promised progeny, that's descendants, ultimately the Messiah and his followers, spiritual progeny. He was indeed promised blessing in the long term, and he was promised property, land, so with that in mind, we can say the land promise made to Abraham becomes the kingdom of God promise in the new. It doesn't matter whether you say, blessed are the meek, they're going to inherit the land. Notice, nothing to do with going to heaven, sitting on a fluffy cloud, talking to your friends all day. Palestine with Jerusalem as its capital, with Jesus sitting on the throne of David, that's the gospel. That's not just, to use the long word, eschatology or futurism. It's the gospel. Mm -hmm. It's the beginning of the gospel. With the loss of that gospel of the kingdom, the bottom fell out of the faith. That's right. Then things went from bad to worse. And therefore the churches, the mega churches, need to be very careful that they aren't just leaving out the entirety of Jesus preaching about the gospel. Evangelicalism is presenting the gospel as though Jesus didn't preach it. Yes. That's a serious mistake. Jesus is the uh, model, prototype, preacher of the gospel. He's the rabbi. You call me rabbi and Lord, he said, you're doing well. He taught in the temple for hours. The devil has induced many people to believe that he didn't really teach. What he taught is not so important. Mm -hmm. The only thing that's important is his death and resurrection. Now that's vital. But are we leaving out the whole first stage of the gospel in our definition? That's our point and that's the point the Abrahamic people made, I think, very effectively to the public. We're making it now in this day and age. That's the challenge. So how can we sum all this up? Jesus, who is a supernaturally begotten human being raised in the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, preached the gospel about the kingdom, died for the sins of the world, was resurrected by his Father, and is coming again. The one God of Israel, using Jesus as his agent, will fix the world by inaugurating a righteous government here on earth, not in heaven. Jesus obeyed his Father by staying on assignment and tirelessly preaching that gospel of the kingdom. He achieved a sinless life and continued to preach until his death. One day he will return to rule the world. He now invites his followers to prepare to rule on earth with him. And what does all this mean for you? Study scripture and determine to define the gospel as Jesus defined it. Never lose sight of the fact that the Jesus you follow was and is still a Jew, now immortalized. He submitted himself to the one God of Israel and knew nothing of a triune God. Jesus is now poised to fulfill the promise God made to Abraham, the father of the Jewish Christian faith. To learn more about this, the Abrahamic faith of Jesus, log on to www.restorationfellowship.org www.kingdomready.org www.21stcr.org www.biblicaltruthseekers.co.uk or www.christianmonotheism.com